I just so realize how little time I have. What's up guys, I got a really good letter here with some questions. And this person writes, my name is Walker and I'm from Vallejo, California. I followed your channel after hearing your story about your turbine Batmobile on VinWiki. I'm a big Batman fan. Your story was so legit that I knew whenever you got around to posting videos on YouTube that they would be worthwhile and I haven't been disappointed. I've been really enjoying your tales and insights. Thanks for sharing them. It's so cool hearing how you're self-made, enjoying life, and giving back to your community with the Genius Garage. The Potter's positive energy you convey is infectious, and I'm thankful I can enjoy your videos. I usually tend to be cooking or doing housework while I watch YouTube, but sometimes I enjoy a good veg out after a tough day. Right on, man. I've got a couple questions for you, but I'll give you my backstory as context first. I'm 30 years old. I'm a career server at a restaurant in Napa. I'm a Christian. I love cars, coffee, books, video games, and my wife. Just over three years ago, I married a super cute but super sick girl. She's got a laundry list of illnesses and is stuck in bed or on the couch most of the time. We had been good friends for like 10 years, so I knew what I was signing up for when I asked her out. You don't start dating a chronically ill person without counting the cost. We dated for three months and I knew she was the one and proposed and we got married a few months later. Life is crazy and things can change so quickly. When I was single, I was super active going to school, working, serving my church's youth ministry, and generally being out and about with not enough time in the day. Time has always been my most valuable asset. Since getting married, my days consist of working hard to pay the bills, driving to doctor's appointments, and spending way more time at home doing housework, cooking, and taking care of my sweet wife. Consequently, the extra time at home has enabled me to play YouTube in the background while I multitask, and these last couple years, I've really gotten into cars. Currently, I have an 03 Civic Si hatchback and an 01 Camaro Z28, and I love them both. Previously, I owned a 01 Crown Vic P71, a 92 Civic, Civic EX, a 94 Integra LS, a 79 Celica, and a 98 Toyota Tacoma. I've learned so much about cars, call culture, and market. Craigslist is a strange and wonderful thing. Yes, it is. And I want to keep learning more. Being married to someone sick, in pain, and honestly close to death a few times has taught me to be thankful and, enjo and to enjoy every day, every moment, because we're never promised another. There's my backstory. Here are my questions. Smiley face. <laughs> what is your philosophy on time and time management? How do you like to spend your time? And what does a day in your life look like? What are your favorite books or ones that have impacted you the most? And do you have any crazy Craigslist stories you could share? Thanks for reading this and putting out great content. Sincerely, Walker. Well, Walker, thank you for writing. And it's very touching. I, uh, it's really refreshing to hear, hear from somebody, obviously that's a car person, but um, has a profound respect for other people in life. And uh, I think you got a lot of selflessness in you. So I respect that. I certainly do. So, tell you what, let's go have a little fun in this Ferrari, and I look forward to talk about time and life and philosophy, because that's basically all I think of. So, time management, time. You know, I think the one thing that's stranger about me than a lot of people, I'm 37 years old, um, and I felt this way for, for a good amount of time. I just so realize how little time I have. I mean, you know, I'm already starting to feel like my body's not what it once was. Like, my legs are still a little crunchy from falling off of horses going on dates with girls. You know what I mean? So in another 10 years, what's my body going to be like? In another 20, 30, how long am I going to be around? What if something dumb happens? What if I pull out in this car and some idiot, you know, is doing 250 miles an hour on a bike and that's it? You know, these things can happen. So I genuinely, genuinely try to make it count. Uh, you know, the first thing is, I, I don't play video games. I don't find them to be a good use of time. I'd rather go out there and try to figure out how to drive a real car. So instead of playing Forza, looking at mountains and pretending to drive a Ferrari, I'm actually doing it and I can talk to you. You know what I mean? Or go have fun with friends. So I try to do real things as much as possible. I work to make time for people and worthwhile friends. But at the same time too, if I realize people out there don't value me as a person or my time or are gonna wrong me or other people or are not worthwhile people themselves, then that's it. I'm done, they're out, goodbye. I don't have time for that in my life. 
you, you know, you've got to build strong, worthwhile relationships that are genuine. They, they don't have to be somebody that's powerful or rich or famous, doesn't matter. But genuine, worthwhile relationships with good people is the best thing you can do with your time in, in resource allocation in that way. You know, if you go into more um, tangible things like a car restoration or building a car or a business or me building Genius Garage, these are all things I'm creating. So they're things you have to think about. What kind of resources, time, money, stress, uh, mental fatigue, emotion, do you have to put into something? And are you hopefully going to get more out of it one day? Or are you genuinely making the world so much of a better place for yourself or everybody that it's worth it? And I mean really worth it. Not emotionally worth it, but really worth it. So you always have to think about those things. You know, I, I really gotta commend you. I, I don't know your whole story with regard to your wife, uh, but I, I, I genuinely am touched by how caring and sweet you were in writing in that letter to me now. Um, and I, I just, I don't even know what to say, man. I, I, don't, I don't have words for you, but that, that's really something special. So obviously you guys really cherish your time, make the, make the most of it. And that doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to go blasting around in some supercar in a desert at 200 miles an hour or, you know, jump off a bridge for a bungee cord or something silly like this. You know, my wife and I, we enjoy driving her little convertible Z3 BMW in the summer evenings and seeing how many bunny rabbits we can spot in one evening and go get ice cream. That's really worthwhile. But I like to create things too. Genius Garage, the world's only flying pterosaur, the world's only turbine-powered Batmobile. I'm, I'm building a recyclable concept car right now. I, I hope we'll be getting over 100 miles a gallon here soon. So those are the things that really matter to me with my time management. But in terms of what would my typical day look like, there really isn't a typical day. My wife usually gets up in the area of, oh, what, like 6.30 in the morning? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I start rolling out of bed then, or maybe later, uh, because I'll work later. Um, you know, breakfast, take care of the pets. Got a bailed chameleon named Charlie, a hamster, and some freshwater fish. Um, you know, the night before, I brainstorm with all the things I have to remember the next day and write it down. So I start going through the list. Making the phone calls I had, can, going through the emails. If it's too early to call somebody or on the West Coast, I have to plan that. Um, you know, and as a note, you relating to your wife who needs help. Uh, I look after my 94-year-old grandfather, 92-year-old grandmother. They've been married 72 years old, and they do great, but, you know, they need some help now and then, and I gotta be there for them, and I've gotta be flexible for that, and it matters to me, because those people helped make me who I am. They never wronged me. They never wronged anybody in the planet. They're the most admirable people you could ever want to meet. They've been married 72 years. My grandfather was a veteran of World War II, Battle of Okinawa, optometrist for 50 years. So, you know, I, I look after them. Um, and then that, it's Genius Garage, mentoring students, um, going to the shop, working on the shop, whatever it is, the business-related things with the organization and whatnot. Uh, then the evening, I might be mentoring more students. And then I try to get myself out of there so I can spend time, have some time with my wife. If it's nice out, we'll take a bicycle ride or a motorcycle ride, maybe go to a farmer's market, or maybe we'll just sit at home on the patio or sit in and, and cook together. And that's, that's really enjoyable. So that's really that. In terms of time, I, uh, when I was younger, I was notorious for knowing what I could do at 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then there's like Casey military, full military power, like when you really throttle full a hefter burner, like 120%. And that's just too much. You can't do that all the time. So, you know, you do have to make some time for yourself. I'm going to pass somebody here. Hang on. make time for yourself, really, for health. I've been well known to work way too long and hard for a long period of time and get sick because of it. So you gotta take care of yourself. Um, but it's tough because I really just wanna do something with my life and I got things to do, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, last two things, books. I don't really have much time to read books, but there's one that I think is really neat from an artistic point of view. It's called The Arrival. And it's technically a children's book. Seriously, The Arrival. It's incredible. It's these unbelievable artistic works. There's no words in it. The book communicates completely visually as what it would be like to be an immigrant 
leaving your home country in a time of turmoil to leave your family behind to try to make a new, to make some money to send for your family and bring them to a new world. And it's much like coming to the United States maybe in the 1800s or early 1900s, but all the pictures and driving do it in such a manner to, uh, to make you feel that. So, any crazy Craigslist stories? Not really. Um, I try to stay away from the loonies, but uh, you always get some weirdos calling you up time once in a while or trying to trade you something wild. That's really all I got, man. Thank you very much for writing. I hope everybody else enjoyed the day, and I hope you subscribe. See you next time.